Hey, and thank you for joining me. I would love for you to tell me a bit about what we could expect from your presentation at the conference this year. So it's about IASD's group Psy game, which was part of the Cyber Dreaming Conference and grew out of the contests that were part of that online conference. It was an outgrowth of a dream telepathy contest in particular, and it came from noticing that people were really enjoying looking at each other's contest entries and kind of collaborating on figuring out which is the target image instead of competing. And we thought, well, what if that were the point? Wouldn't that be fun? And that's what we ended up doing was creating a game that does that where people work together to try to dream a target and then look for common elements and then see if they can use those to identify the target. People really enjoyed it. It was very fun. It went on for eight years. The first three years were kind of developmental. We made some tweaks in the protocol. The last five years were very consistent protocol with a very ironclad method of selecting the target that seemed to be immune to any influence from any of us or any kind of faking. After those five consistent years of the experience and help with, with my co-presenters of keeping records on it, I thought, hey, we have data. We could analyze these data and see if from a sciencey perspective, we actually did succeed at this. So that's what my presentation is on. That is really exciting. When I first heard about the Psy Dreaming Contest, I was really fascinated by this topic of being able to use the dream space to find information and things. And it makes so much sense that it is a collaborative effort because everybody interprets things in different ways. So I am sure that there is wonderful data that has been analyzed from comparing the notes and doing like a collaborative game. So I'm really excited for that. By pooling their different styles of dreaming and of observation, they end up coming up with things that individuals can't even come up with. So it's even more amazing to me than the contests. So you can see what you think of it. Yes, that collaborative aspect is really, really powerful. So is there a certain finding or aspect from the data that you're excited for people to hear about? The whole thing is so exciting to me. And it's all rather what I expect expected, because I'm an optimist, and in creating the game, I thought that people would like it, but they love it. I thought that people would bring their different styles of dreaming and of analysis of dreams uh, to selecting the target, and people's styles are so diverse that it really blew me away. And I thought that when we looked at the data and considered how successful we really were, that it might be mm, impressive, but when I looked at it, it wasn't just, oh, wow, it was, oh, wow. So I'm hoping that, that people will share that impression as I present the, the results. And I hope they'll really enjoy the stories that go with it. That is so exciting. And speaking of good dream stories, do you have a dream to share that left a profound impact on you or maybe somebody that you've worked with? I have so many of those, but there's one that I'd like to share that I think goes with this theme of group dreaming and of tapping into our connectedness. There was a time not too long ago when I was asked by a PhD student to participate in his study. He was asking lucid dreamers to try to summon kundalini in their dreams, not just the, the energy phenomenon, but also the Hindu goddess, kundalini as a manifestation of the divine feminine. And I had not even known that there was a Hindu goddess using the name kundalini. I'm not a student of Hinduism nor an adherent of Hinduism, and, and I knew very little about it, but I was game for trying that. And in one of my dreams, I was flying along lucidly, and, and on a whim, I said, kundalini, could I see where you live? addressing her as a personified entity. And I was kind of whisked away through the night sky and set on top of a mountaintop, a snowy mountaintop, almost like a helicopter pad, high on this mountain. And I was shown across the valley another snowy mountain with a very distinctive shape. And I was informed that this was the home of Kundalini. 
and that I was not allowed to visit it. I could see it, but I couldn't visit it. Well, I woke from that dream. I sketched the shape of that mountaintop. And then I went online and, and looked up does Kundalini have a home? Where is it? Well, it turns out that she, along with all of the Hindu pantheon, are conceived to live on a certain mountain called Mount Mara. The photographs of it that I found looked exactly like the one in my dream. And indeed, it's very sacred and people are not allowed on it. Now, my impression from that, and there would be different ways of interpreting it, but my impression is that I tapped into the collective unconscious, as the Jungians would say, and accessed, you might say, the Hindu sector of it. I connected somehow with the many, many millions of people who share that belief. And it was something that I knew nothing about before dreaming it, but I somehow tapped into that. For me, that's absolutely magical, and it really moves me emotionally, deeply, to know that we are all that connected and that in our dreams, we can tap into that. We can access those very deep connections. I love hearing dream stories about people that dream about certain information and certain places and things that later is confirmed to be true when they wake up and research it or whatever. And I think that is really, really interesting. I'm really excited to see the data analysis from the group dreaming reports. And I really, really appreciate you for taking time to chat with me. And I'm sure that everybody will enjoy it as well. Thank you very much. It's 